Welcome back to Twickenham. Rugby Union Clash of the Codes. It's Bath against Wigan. Live and exclusive here on Sky. Kick-off time, less than 10 minutes time away. And uh, with us, Mike Stevenson and Stuart Barnes. Steve-O, first of all, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. What's going to happen? No problem. I think that Wigan, their professionalism will take them through. Uh, it won't be a shock for me to see them win. Fine, right. That, <laughs> no doubt about that. Come on, Stuart. Well, I've had a spread bet by and Bath at 23 points to win. So, if Wigan are to win this one, all donations will be gratefully received. And I also have had a fiver bet with this man. So it has to be Bath. I was going to ask you, was there a little side bet between the two of you? Because this man's very much in the seat at the moment, isn't he, Steve? -o? Well, absolutely. But uh, we didn't take an aggregate, which is just as well, because I can't see Bath overhauling uh, Excuse that. me, you did. It gave me 40 points start. I wanted to make it 100. Oh, this game. But you said, no, 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 only five. So, Talk about putting your money where your mouth is. So it's a fiver at the moment, then. Is a it actually, it, seriously, Mike, I mean, we haven't actually asked you what you think the margin of victory might be. I think it'll be very close. I think it uh, could come down to about three or four points. There won't be much in it. Right. And Stuart? Well, the man has been taking some sort of mushrooms up in the north of England. There's no doubt at all. Bath are going to win this one by 30 points. They're going to be too strong up front. And Jerry Guscott wearing radio headphones, working for radio this afternoon. He turned up then. <laughs> You'd like to see him play rugby league as well, Steve-O. Uh, no, I don't think he'd make it, but uh, he should have been playing today. Well, there's a yes. man who did, David, Jonathan Davis. Great player, both codes. Yep, tremendous player. This is Bath. They include 11 of the side that beat Leicester here in the cup final. The Scottish trio of Nicol, Hilton and Peters have gone with their country to New Zealand now, so Ian Sanders, Kevin Yates and Ed Pearce all take part, having all played at Main Road in somewhat different roles. Victor Abugu returns after a two-month absence. So Wigan select 15 today and include two men who we thought we would never see on the big stage again. 42-year-old coach Graham West and Joe Lydon, 32 years of age. They come out of retirement to play very specialist roles at lock and fly half. Here's Callard. Chance to counter. Oh, great run from Callard. The tackling non-existent there from Wigan. That will be of a concern to them. Victor Abugu. Another great position for Bath. Wigan going over the top and conceding another penalty. I think they'd be quite happy to concede that penalty. They really were on the rack then. Twigamala going over the top. But surely they'll go for the points. Well, look at the boos from the crowd say it all, don't they? They want to open rugby. Yeah, but Bath very sensibly get points on the board. Really get three, get six, then the tries will come. Of that, there's no doubt. So it's Callard. Easy chance for him. Didn't have a particularly good day with the boot here in the cup final, but no mistake from that range. We've played four minutes, and Bath lead by three points to nil. Uh, Jomo is controlling at the base of the scrum. This time the Wigan front row doing well, though, just to hold it for a while, but they've come up now and... Was there a foot in the scrum? The referee is going to give a penalty try. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. Well, he's made absolutely the right decision, Brian Camps. You can't go on having that situation in the scrum. He's playing the rules as Tatupu and Abugu have a word about it all. And quite rightly, the Wigan players prevented that ball going across the line so Bath could have scored. And Brian Camps was left with no option at all but to award a penalty try to try and force a try so close but it's the rugby union game that's why they are the champions now will Bath look to move it wide to Glanville Cat but offside again the Wigan back line up too quickly and this is in front of the post and I would have thought that Callard will have a go yeah you know there's obviously uh, not a lot, of, a lot of sympathy for Brian Camps or the referee but he is playing the letters of the law, which is fair enough. Well, to Bath's credit, they've started to move it. Running the penalty. Yates. Again, a Wigan player on the wrong side. Cleared out of the way. It's out now to Adi Adebayo. And Bath have their second try. The first one, a penalty try. That one more appealing to the eye and Adi Adebayo is the scorer. 
Well, they sucked the cover in, didn't they? And there was plenty here. Mike Catt had the first dart at it. But the Adebayo scored it. We can see two extra Bath players in support as well. Good work by Catt. You could see that he, he drew the centre, Henry Paul, Adebayo, into the gap oh, with the conversion kick. Not a good one, but Bath have a 15-point to nil lead. And they certainly can't afford that, just giving away possession as here go Bath again. Slidehold. Here goes Slidehold now, and he's got one to beat Radlinski. He showed him the outside, and Slidehold takes the opportunity. Oh, yes. He was never given the chance at Main Road, but he's taken it at Twickenham. Well, well played, John Schleinholt. He came on a different line. It's the move on the blind side, testing Wigan's organisation. Look how straight he comes. He brushes off that first tackle of Robinson and then just takes the outside of Radlinski. is nowhere near him. ...that Wigan have been doing to other sides in Super League is making the mistakes pay, and Bath certainly did that. I think that signals the end of kicks at goal from penalties. Bath having run this one, this is Cat. Meant for Lumsden, awkward for a fire. It's fallen nicely for Ali Adebayo to get another try. That was unfortunate for a fire. Well, just when you want a, a couple of good breaks for our Wigan. Uh, subject to a wicked bounce, so you have to say that good kick from Mike Cat, though good option. A fire has to turn, but you can't cater for that in any in any game, Union or League. And Adebayo has the easy task of just dropping it over the line. Just gets the fingertips to it, doesn't he? Man, a fire, but it was a lovely kick there. Cat kicking the ball, spinning it backwards. It good thinking, but well finished. Good support play by Adebayo. It really was an excellent try. Bad bounce, but let's not take anything away from the wonderful play from Cat. Callard misses with another kick. Both sides are going to get tired, and he must be suffering out there. And you get the feeling that Wigan are adjusting to the laws all the time. Feeling more comfortable. Robinson, Maisie running from him, a fire, Radlinski, support is out wide, it's Paul onto Connolly, can Connolly make it? The referee has brought them back for a forward pass. It is a crying shame because it would have been a classic try. Well, I've been watching Rugby Union for years, I didn't know you had a forward pass and that looked A-OK -okay to me. All right, you may say I'm biased, but that looked absolutely spot on. Superb play by Wigan. Well, it was right on the margin, that decision. Cat. Well, it was obviously a close fall call from Brian Camps on that. Just forget the ball for a minute and have a look outside the touchline at the, the, the touch judge Stuart Pearce. It just comes across. The pass goes from Henry Paul. And you'll see the touch judge say, look, look at his hand. He's saying forward, forward. He's linking with the referee. So that's the communication aspect. That's fair enough. That's what the touch judges are there for. So because of that, Wigan go to half time with no points on the board. But it was mighty close. And Connolly knew that he almost had a moment to remember. But it's Bath who lead 25 points to nil. And we're back after the break. A Germo. Of course, the players have to stay down now with the new law. Stay bound at the scrum until the scrum is over. This is Cat. It was a lovely pickup. It was a beautiful run. What a good try from Mike Cat. Yes, it certainly was. He really is beginning to dictate uh, that the fly half position now. It was second phase ball, and Mike Katz saw it, a huge out overlap. A fire was faced with three Bath players, and Mike Katz goes over without a hand laid on him.
super play. You can see how he uses the dummy runner coming back on the inside. You see that Craig Murdoch hesitated, and it's enough for this guy. His class, that there is no doubt. Mike Cat running the angles, used the dummy runner, absolutely wonderful. And Craig Murdoch fell for him. And Callard has rediscovered his kicking form. It was a difficult one, but he judged it well. Be at an end for him as Phil de Glanville returns after receiving treatment. Yes, but it's a, it's a wonderful five or ten minutes that he's had on the field, and he'll cherish that for some time. Robinson always sets it back beautifully. De Glanville straight back into the action. Still going, Phil de Glanville. That's a try. So strong in the challenge, Phil de Glanville. He's not a big man, but he's got great strength. Yes, he certainly has, and if he sees a gap, he'll go absolutely for it. Once again, the cover defence of Wigan hesitated. Robinson just deciding, a bit undecided as to whether to come in, stay out, what do I do? The twixt in between, really, and de Glanville forces himself over. But here's John Callard. Straight through the middle. Well, Wigan losing one of their rugby union men, which uh, isn't going to help their cause at all. Yates. So disappointed to miss out on the cup final. To Glanville. And where did that come flying from? It was taken by a fire. And the upshot could well be a clear overlap here for Wigan. Bradlinski has seen it. Henry Paul. A fire. Great chance here. He's got Murdoch with him. And Murdoch is going to go. And Murdoch is going to score. From their own line. Well, they've waited a long time. It was good work right from behind their own sticks. And Paul back on the inside. A fire did the right thing. Good support play, though, by Craig Murdoch. And nothing was going to go and stop him. Determination there. He'll remember that for a long time. Craig Murdoch in at the corner. Martin the fire. It was good defense. They covered well, but they ran out of numbers. Well down the little half-back, Craig Murdoch. Great try, length of the field. Well, it doesn't matter what code you support, Union or League, that was a wonderful try from Wigan to go the whole length of the field. So it's Andrew Farrell with the conversion. It's a nice strike, but not quite the direction. So Wigan have to settle with the try, but it was a good one. Henry Paul. Farrell. Twigamala gets away from one, and he's still going. They'll never get him. As sure as night follows day, Twigamala gets those. Tremendous player, Vaiga Twigamala, but good work by the Wigan forwards. They got the ball, spun it out wide, took the risk. For such a big man, poetry in motion, the lovely step and the strength. Farrell was at a superb game. There you can see the hesitation. The youngster, on this occasion, no match for him. Just shrugs them away. Sheer strength there. But here well, you see where they've pinched the ball. Yes, but once it got back, it was certainly very much on, and Wigan knew it. It's the wide ball here. Now, as you freeze it there, look out. This man here, he's, he's betwixt in between. He doesn't know whether it's a go for Twigimala or not. Takes a sensible option and doesn't, probably. But I tell you what, there's a few checkbooks around in rugby union at the moment. You're going to need an awfully big one to lure this chap away from Central Park, I would imagine. Yep, you spot on there. He's probably the best in the world in both codes. 
Farrell successful with the conversion. We're going to have 12 points. Bath lead 39-12. Saunders tapping and going. Wigan not 10 metres. Robinson alive to the threat. It's with Graham Dorr. And he felt that from Terry O'Connor. That's what we call a crunch hit. And bang. Oof. Well, it's been deemed a dangerous tackle. The penalty has been given. Well, I thought the hands, if they were touching the body, that's deemed as a OK tackle. Jamie, uh, perhaps you could explain it to me. Well, you've got to use the hands to try and get hold of the body. That's the difference. That's what constitutes a tackle. And Bath took the scrum again from the penalty. They're without Adiana Bay at the moment, who's down injured, but they probably won't need him if the forwards continue to do work like this. The referee has given the try. He was on the verge of giving a penalty try. But the try was given, and Bath have reasserted their dominance. Well, certainly not the way that this crowd wanted that. Graham Dorr has also come off as we watch Callard's kick drift wide. Robinson has a Jomo with him. He went forward. I think it's, it's obviously getting a bit uh, casual at the moment, but I think Bath would like to get 50 on the board. I'm sure they would. Robinson wanted to get there, quick pass with Jomo. Paul running into the post, still finding Connolly. Here's Twigamala. And here's Robinson away now he's got support back inside again it's from Murdoch and Murdoch's going to go for it and he's going to get the race to go his way to finish off another move from behind the Wigan line oh yes a tired looking Craig Murdoch on the second occasion but good adventurous play something that you would never dream of doing in rugby league playing safety first in that area but they know they have that little possession and look at this man go unselfish ball back on the inside from Robinson Murdoch who's had a fine game came in for the injured Sean Edwards he certainly can hold his head up high that's a fine try the reserve match referee, Chris Reed's what he's about. But I think we're going to won this second half. <laughs> yes, it was 25-0 at half-time. Wigan had a couple more points to make it far. 44, Wigan 19. Jamie, your man of the match. Well, my statement prosper man of the match today is uh, Andy Robinson. I think, once again, he, he's shown how useful a link man is and the manner in which he plays it and I just admire his attitude to the game of rugby union and his commitment to his club and that's it Bath have won by 44 points to 19 it was a convincing victory because of their power up front but certainly in the second half when Wigan moved it out wide once again we saw the true quality in their side especially when it comes down to a one-on-one -on -one situation but it's Bath who rightly won they were the better side and now we can join Graham Simmons on the pitch Miles, thank you very much indeed Sean Edwards a reluctant spectator today but I imagine extremely pleased with your team's performance yeah actually it was the best rugby game of rugby union I've ever seen it was so exciting uh, where uh, maybe rugby union is not quite that exciting normally but um, I think if one or two matches of the ball could have gone our way and uh, certainly we've had a couple of games under our belts. Maybe we could have given Bath a run for the money and maybe Ashton pushed them to win, win in the game. It was very much the same as Main Road in, in one instance, wasn't it? In that in the, the, the longer the game went on, the better the foreign team, if I can use that word in inverted commas, got. Bath got better at Main Road, you got better here in the second half. 
Well, we got better today. I don't know if it was Bathy Ladders in the game, but certainly at Main Road, we did ease off a bit because, you know, we didn't, we didn't want to run the score up too much against Bath. But I don't think that was the case today. I think the Bath were trying their hardest all the way through. But we started to get a bit of ball, got grips of the game a little bit, and we got the ball out to our backs. And obviously, they showed how exciting they can be. The backs really did prove a point today, didn't they? Well, I think so. And uh, I think the fitness of the Wigan team showed quite through because it was a very fast game for Rugby Union because, due credit to Bath, they tried to keep the ball alive as much as possible and play attacking rugby. Uh, where in a lot of the other games it seems to be a bit more stop start so that's due credit to Bath but in the second half I think they probably paid for it because they started to tire where our lads were getting the second win and coming on strong Alright, thanks for your time Sean, Miles, back to you